We'll now go to the floor for questions. If reporters could please line up at the microphone behind me and identify yourselves by name and outlet. And just a reminder, it'll be one question and one follow-up. First question. Morning, Premier uh, Richard, Southern City News. How you doing? Hey, Richard, I'm doing well. How about yourself? Not bad, thanks. I want to get your take, if you don't mind, on sure. your budget tomorrow. Specifically, yeah. uh, the federal finance minister said in her budget there will be targeted supports for those who have struggled with high inflation and high interest rates. Will there also be such targeted supports for Ontarians in your budget tomorrow? Well, without disclosing the, the budget, um, and before I get myself in trouble, I'm going to hand it over to the budget chief. So, uh, the budget chief, here I go, the finance minister. <laughs> no, that's I'm okay. living back in the Toronto City Hall days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no problem there, Premier. No, that's, that's great. So, so Richard, uh, so one more sleep. Um, and uh, it's a very tough time for many people in Ontario and right across the country. We saw inflation come down yesterday from 5.9 to 5.2, uh, but it's still very high. And uh, that's why we took action very early. In fact, last year, Premier Yoko, we did the budget together and we tabled a budget uh, that we took to the people of Ontario, which included uh, a reduction of the gas tax to make uh, it more affordable at a time when gas prices were very high. Uh, we increased the minimum wage to 1550, which is the second highest in the land. Uh, we increased the low individual family tax credit so that low income workers are paying some of the lowest taxes, personal income taxes in Canada. Uh, but we didn't stop there. As you know, in the fall economic statement, we doubled the guaranteed annual income uh, for low income seniors, up to 200,000 seniors, so they could get another $1,000 into their, their pockets. We increased uh, Ontario Disability Support Program by 5%. First time any government indexed it to inflation, and we also increased the earnings exemption so that from 200 to 1,000, so they could keep more money in their pockets if they chose and can and wanted to work. So we've done a lot of things, and we're going to continue going because no, we know that things have been tough in this province, and uh, we'll talk about it some more tomorrow. I didn't quite get a clear answer there, but Premier. Um, I have a follow-up for you yes. on another topic. The field for the mayoral race in Toronto has grown dramatically. Mitzi Hunter telling us today she intends to run. Josh Matlow is in there. What do you make of these field of, of candidates, Premier? Well, I think the, the councillors, uh, you know, that are jumping in there, they don't have to step down, unlike MPs and MPPs, which, I don't know, I, I think council should review that. But I'll work with anyone. As I've shown, there's 444 municipalities. I'll work with any mayor that gets elected to make sure the best interests of their constituents, um, you know, work out. No matter if it's supporting them on on transit, or supporting them on on affordable and attainable homes and building homes. So it, it doesn't matter who who gets elected, and uh, I'm I'm staying out of that election. So well, good luck to all of them. I I encourage you to to run and all the very best. It's uh, tough putting your name forward. So, Hi, Premier. Hi. Uh, on the mayoral race, you said you're going to stay out of it. Does that yep. mean you will not? You do have the power to change rules like whether or not somebody has to resign their seat in order to run for mayor. Is that something you're going to get involved in? No. No, I'm just going to stay out of that. And This is not the time to do that. And uh, I just want to wish everyone all the best. It's going to be a tough race. It's going to be an exciting race. I, th I think the margin is going to be pretty small on on the percentage that you need to win, um, you know, with those many candidates. But maybe a few will drop out. You, you just never know with the, the mayoral election. But either way, I'm going to I'm going to work uh, with whoever's the mayor. Whoever is the mayor is is looking at this big budget hole, and they're pleading with your government and the federal government to help fill that. And they say at this point they haven't heard anything. Should they be making other plans? Do you think that's a fair request? It's always a fair request, but we, we've given uh, Toronto hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, no matter if it's Tron if it's for their transit. I, actually, not hundred million, probably a couple billions, billions of dollars uh, to Toronto. We've bailed them out on numerous occasions. But I have a message to the new mayor. You got to be fiscally responsible. You're spending the hardworking taxpayers' money. You, you can't be wasting money. And if, if you know, maybe I'm, I'm going back a little bit. But when Rob and I went down there, the first question, the first thing out of the, uh, you know, the the uh, city manager's mouth, you have 780 million dollar deficit, and by the way, you have to raise taxes 20 some odd percent. Well, we did the opposite. We ended up driving efficiencies. We found a billion dollars of savings. We delivered a zero percent tax increase. That's the difference of treating the taxpayers' money like your own. 
versus treating it like you just don't care. And you, the easiest thing is to just raise taxes. That's unacceptable. Drive efficiencies throughout the system. There's not one level of government that someone can convince me there's not waste, including the province, the federal government, and municipal governments. We have to start driving efficiencies, thinking outside the box, and doing things differently. Because I can tell you one thing, these hardworking people here and around the province, they get a paycheck, and they see the government gouging them on taxes, then they go buy something, more taxes, and then they're paying property taxes. They're fed up. They're done. They're absolutely done. They work their backs off, you know, up to 60 hours a week. And then they put in overtime, and the government's gouging them. So we all have to drive efficient, uh, efficiencies throughout each level of government. Hey, good morning, Premier Colin DeMello from Global hey, News. Colin. I wanted to ask you about CSIS. So yesterday yes. you had indicated that your um, staff had received a briefing and that yep. that briefing wasn't really substantive. I, I wanted to know from you, what exactly did CSIS tell your office? Did they raise oh. issues about Vincent Kerr? Did they give you any kind of evidence um, or did they yeah. share any of their concerns? So Colin, what, what happened, I guess an article came out, so our, our staff requested a meeting with CSIS. They sat down, had a, a quick discussion with them. There wasn't a lot uh, that we didn't already see in the paper or the article. And we just want Vincent uh, to clear his name and get back with uh, the, the team. He, it was his choice to step aside and uh, we're, we're going to see what happens here. But uh, in my opinion, Vincent's a, a good person. He's an important part of our team. He's going to clear his name and then he'll buy, be back with us. So what should Ontarians take from your support of Vincent Kerr? CSIS has some kind of a concern, but you're saying there is a path for him back into caucus. Does if that mean... Clears, if he clears his name, Colin. Fair enough, fair If he enough. doesn't but, clear his name, then he's not going to be part of our party. But, but how are you approaching what uh, these allegations from CSIS or this investigation or suspicions from CSIS are? Do you believe what CSIS is suspecting here, or is this, in your view just much ado about nothing. I'll be very frank. As I said yesterday, they were pretty vague. So, you know, I, again, if he clears his name, he'll be part of our party. If he doesn't clear his name, I guess he'll have more issues to deal with. Hi, Premier. Hi. Laura, Laura Stone, hey, Globe Laura. and Mail. Just on the clearing his name element, how do you expect Mr. Kerr to clear his name? I understand he has a lawyer who, who's represented you in the past. Do you think he's going to sue over this? Like, what is the process for clearing his you name? You know, that, that's going to be up to Vincent and up to CSIS. Uh, again, you can't throw someone's name out there and, and, uh, and not give the, the uh, person an opportunity to clear it. Nothing's worse than uh, being accused of something and the media gets a hold of it and runs it. And, and it's not the media's fault. That's your job. Um, it's just an unfortunate situation, very unfortunate. But again, um, when, it, when it comes to elections, and this is a federal government, I have zero tolerance for any outside interference, any nonsense that's going on. Uh, we live in a democratic society, and uh, no one's going to dictate to any Ontarian who they should vote for and what party they should vote for. Uh, that's, that's our democratic right, and that's why we have the greatest jurisdiction, greatest country in the world. Okay, thanks. Um, just on another topic regarding yep. the, the VW deal, yes. we've seen some criticism from the federal Conservative Party leader, Pierre Polyev, over the secrecy of this. He's gone after Justin Trudeau for not revealing how much this has cost and, you know, says it, it, how much of money is, is Canada giving to the foreign corporation. What do you make of these comments, and do you think that they're also direct, supposed to be critical of you? No, that's, that's up to them. I'm not getting involved in their, their political, uh, you know, comments up in Ottawa. We, we have the greatest province in the world. We did a great deal. I have the best person uh, anywhere in the country, Vic Fideli, that worked endlessly along with, I think, 12 or 13 ministries, three agencies with the federal government and with uh, municipalities. And right, right now, since we've created the uh, conditions and the environment, companies, uh, many companies, life sciences, but especially in the auto sector, they're coming back into Ontario. Folks, when, when we first took office in 2018, these companies were leaving in the droves. The auto sector was closing down. We were losing it. And because we created the environment, we worked hand-in-hand -hand with all three levels of government. We have seen companies coming in by the droves. Uh, and do you know what's amazing? Stats Canada came out. And every single uh, time I come out here, you hear me preaching about we need more homes, we need more homes. There's 300,000 people coming. And I keep warning people. All of a sudden, Stats Canada comes out. 
and they said last year 450,000 people landed here in Ontario and calling this home. And that's why I'm saying, guys, I'm setting the panic alarms off and thank all the municipalities for passing our housing plan. I thank Mayor Burton for passing our housing plan. Uh, there's one outlier, and I'm going to call him out, is the Mayor of Newmarket, Mayor Taylor. I gave him a call this morning. Uh, there's 444 municipalities. Everyone's agreeing. It's called Team Ontario, Team Effort. Where are we putting the 450,000 people? We need to build homes. We need to build them quick. And I said, there's the federal government's said they were going to bring in 500,000 people. And I said, well, 300,000 were landing here in Toronto, the GTA, and in Ottawa. Well, I, w I underestimated. There's 450,000 people. And uh, that's why we need the schools, the hospitals, the bridges, the infrastructure, and, and especially the homes. So I, I just want to thank all the mayors out there. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very grateful. We can't do it without you. And I'm just uh, blessed to have great uh, relationships with them. Morning, Premier uh, Liam Casey with the uh, Canadian Press. Hi. Uh, the Federal Environment Minister, Stephen Guibault, really yeah. ripped into Ontario's approach to the environment yesterday, said collaboration was mm -hmm. impossible, uh, Ontario had no desire to protect the environment, sort of on and on. Wondering what you make of those comments and will you pledge to protect uh, okay, yeah. Premier Doug Ford speaking to reporters this morning yeah, no, with I, a pre-budget announcement. The I, I Ontario budget will be tabled tomorrow.